Hello and welcome to the channel. Today is all about the Dragonite tank in The Elder Scrolls Online. Dragonites are arguably the best at playing a tank. With great class abilities to pull and immobilize your targets, pair this with simple ways to manage your resources, this class truly makes it simple for any player who is starting out. In this guide we will be going over what race to play, which food or drink to use, what type of potions to run, which skills are the most important, what are the key passives, how to set up your skills, what set should I look for, and where to spend your champion points. Starting off, you will need to make your character, as you will have to pick a race for your tank. My top choices for what race to play are Argonians, Imperials, Nords, and red guards. At the end of the day, the race you choose really doesn't matter, as any race can fill any role. I went with a Nord, as they have an increase to max health and increase to max stamina with a little bit of ultimate generation, with an increase to resistance as well. When it comes to food or drinks, you will want something that focuses on your resources. The top tier food is Bewitched Sugar Skull, as this gives you max health, stamina, and magicka, with an increase to health recovery. This can be very expensive to buy and should be only used in endgame content. The food I recommend running is Captain Tomato Beet Casserole, Jugged Rabbit in Preserve, Long Fin Paste with Melon Sauce, Wither Tree in Venison Pot Roast, or crown fortified meal, as these increase your max health, stamina, and magicka. When it comes to potions, you will want something that focuses on restoring all your resources. You want to either craft or buy essence of health. The other option is try restoration potion with daily rewards or in-game purchases. These potions restore health, stamina, and magicka. They also increase your health, stamina, and magicka recovery. For the Munda Stone, I would recommend running the Actronaut, as this increases your magicka recovery. This is one of the major resources we use heavily on the build. We don't want stamina recovery, as stamina recovery is suppressed while holding block. Other Munda Stones you could use are the Lady with an increased resistance, the Lord with max health, the mage with max magicka, or the tower with max stamina. As you level your character, you will want to place all your attribute points into health, as a tank takes a lot of damage and needs a good amount of health to survive these encounters. When you earn skill points, I recommend leveling every class skill ready to be morphed, as skills can change from any new update. This way, you are ready to use a skill with your desired morph. Starting in the Ardent Flame skill line, we will be using the third ability, Fiery Breath, morphed into Engulfing Flames. This increases the flame damage the afflicted target takes, a great way to buff any player who deals fire damage. Next, we want the fourth ability, Fiery Grip, morphed into Unrelenting Grip. This is used to pull targets to you, which makes grouping easier. It will taunt the target if it hadn't been taunted already. Now, if the target can't be pulled, you refund the cost of the ability. In the Draconic Power skill line, we will want the second ability, Dark Talons, morphed into Choking Talons. This is to immobilize targets in the area. Targets will also deal less damage, a great way to take less damage. Next, we want the third ability, Dragon Blood, morphed into Green Dragon Blood. This is our self heal as this will heal us for a percent of our missing health. In the Earth and Heart skill line, we will want the ultimate Magma Armor morphed into Magma Shell. We will use this ultimate if we have not unlocked the Assault or Support ultimate, as this limits the income and damage to 3% of our max health. It also provides a damage shield to our allies, a great way to take a lot of damage for a short time and protect our allies as well. Next, we want the third ability, Obsidian Shield, morphed into Igneous Shield. 
This provides a damage shield to you and your group members. The strength of the shield is based on your max health. In the one-handed shield skill line, we will want the ultimate shield wall, morphed into shield discipline. We use this ultimate if we have not unlocked the assault or support ultimate, as this allows us to block all incoming damage. While the ultimate is active, any one hand and shield ability costs nothing. Next, we want the first ability puncture, morphed into pierce armor. This applies taunt to the target and it will be the main taunt ability for the build. As this reduces a target's armor by a significant amount, allowing DPS to deal more damage. Next, we want the third ability, Defensive Posture, morphed into Defensive Stance. While this skill is slotted, it reduces the cost of blocking, along with increasing the amount of damage you can block. Great ability for the overall survivability of your tank. In the Destruction Staff skill line, we will want the second ability, Wall of Elements morphed into Elemental Blockade. This creates an area of effect on the ground for a decent amount of time. We mostly use this to apply our enchantment from the Destruction Staff on the target. This only affects one target in the area at a time, with it always procking on the closest target. Next, we want the third ability, Destructive Touch, morphed into Destructive Clench. This ability is used to taunt targets at a range, so we don't need to run to the target in order to grab taunt. It will also immobilize smaller targets, reduce their damage done, and always apply the frost status effect when used. In the Mage's Guild skill line, we will want the fourth ability Equilibrium, morphed into Balance. This exchanges some of our health for some Magicka, this is to manage our resources, as we will use the Magicka we gain to convert that into Stamina. This is also where our major resistance comes from, allowing us to reduce incoming damage. In the Assault skill line, we will want the Ultimate Warhorn, morphed into Aggressive Horn. This provides the group with an increase to their max Magicka and Stamina for a decent amount of time along with an increase to their critical damage done. Great for the group's utilities and burning down bosses. In the support skill line, we will want the ultimate barrier morphed into replenishing barrier. This provides the group with a massive damage shield for a decent amount of time. Whenever a shield dissolves, we gain Magicka and ultimate back great ability for the group's survivability. As you earn more skill points and have most of your desired skills, you will want to start adding passives to your character. Passives are utilities that are active all the time, as these can help improve your gameplay. In the Ardent Flame skill line, we have Combustion, Warmth, Searing Heat, and World in Ruin. The key passives in the skill line are Combustion, with an increase to the Poison and Flame status effect. It also restores Magicka and Stamina if you apply either one of these status effects. Then Warmth reduces the movement speed of a target if hit with a direct attack from a skill within the Ardent Flame skill line. In the Draconic Power skill line, we have Iron Skin, Burning Heart, Elder Dragon, and Scaled Armor. All of these are great passives to have. As Iron Skin increases the amount of damage you can block, Burning Heat increases your healing received while a Draconic Power skill is active, Elder Dragon increases your health recovery while a Draconic Power skill is slotted, and Scale Armor gives you bonus resistance. In the Earth and Heart skill line, we have Eternal Mountain, Battle Roar, Mountain's Blessing, and Helping Hands. The key passives in the skill line are Battle Roar, as this restores health, magicka, and stamina per point of ultimate used. 
Mountain's Blessing gives the group weapon damage whenever we cast an Earth and Heart ability, along with gaining some ultimate while in combat. With Helping Hands restoring 1120 stamina whenever we cast a Magicka based Earth and Heart ability that costs more than that amount. In the one hand and shield skill line, while we are wielding this weapon, we have Fortress, Sword and Board, Deadly Bash, Deflect Bolt, and Battlefield Mobility. These are all critical passives to have, as Fortress reduces the cost of one hand and shield ability, along with reduce the cost of blocking. Sword and Board increases the amount of damage we can block, with an increase to weapon and spell damage. Deadly Bash has a reduced cost to bash and deals slightly more damage. Deflect Bolts increases the amount of damage blocked by range attack, with Battlefield Mobility reducing the movement speed penalty while blocking. In the Destruction Staff skill line, while we are wielding this weapon, we have Tri Focus, Penetrating Magic, Elemental Force, Ancient Knowledge, and Destruction Expert. Do not pick up Trifocus, as this passive makes your Frost Staff cost Magicka while blocking instead of Stanima, making it harder to sustain. The key passives on the skill line are Elemental Force, increasing the chance to apply status effect, then Ancient Knowledge, reduces the cost of blocking and increases the amount of damage we can block. In the light armor skill line, we have Grace, Evocation, Spell Warding, Prodigy, and Concentration. The key passives in the skill line are Grace, which reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you, with a reduced cost of sprint as well. As Evocation increases Magicka recovery and reduces the cost of Magicka abilities, with Spell Warding increasing our Spell Resistance. In the Heavy Armor skill line, we have Resolve, Constitution, Juggernaut, Revitalize, and Rapid Mending. All of these are critical to the build, as Resolve adds Resistance, Constitution adds health recovery, along with restoring Magicka and Stamina when you take damage. Juggernaut gives you max health. Revitalize increases the resources restored after a heavy attack, with Rapid Mending increasing our healing received. In the Mage's Guild skill line, we have Persuasive Will, Mage Adapt, Everlasting Magic, Magicka Controller, and Might of the Guild. The key passives in the skill line are Mage Adept, with a reduced cost to Mage a Guild abilities, as Everlasting Magic increases the duration of Mage Guild abilities, with Magicka Controller increasing our Max Magicka and Magicka Recovery per Mage Guild ability that is slotted. In the Undaunted skill line, we have Undaunted Command and Undaunted Metal. These are critical to the build, as Undaunted Command allows us to restore Max Health, Magicka, and Stamina whenever we activate a Synergy. With Undaunted Metal giving an increase to our Max Health, Magicka, and Stamina, per type of armor weight. In the support skill line, we have Magicka Aid, as this increases our Magicka recovery per support skill slotted. In the alchemy, you will want medicinal youth, as this increases the duration of potion effects. In provisioning, you will want gourmet, as this increases the duration of any food you eat. When it comes to setting up your ability bar, you have two ability bars to work with. The main bar is where the essential skills are located, 
with the backup bar applying debuffs to targets. Starting on the main bar, we have Igneous Shield, Defensive Stance, Green Dragon Blood, Balance, and Pierce Armor. For the ultimate on this bar, we will want to use Shield Discipline or Replenishing Barrier. When it comes to the back bar, we want to use Unrelenting Grip, Blockade of Frost, Engulfing Flame, Choking Talons, and Frost Clench. The ultimate on this bar is Magma Shell or Aggressive Horn. While playing, you will need to start gathering gear for your tank. The gear I recommend are Torig's Pack, Plague Doctor, Ebon Armory, Worm's Remnant, and Endurance, as all these can be obtained in the base game. Torig's Pack is a crafted set that helps with enchantments. Plague Doctor is found in the Overland that provides massive amounts of health. Ebon Armory is a four-man dungeon set that gives you and the group an increase to your max health. Worm's Remnant is also found in a four-man dungeon. This provides an increase to your magicka recovery for the group. Endurance is a reward for completing daily random dungeons. Now for the main gear we are using on the build. Starting off with your main hand weapon being Crimson Oaths Revive. This set reduces any target's armor in the area whenever we apply a major or minor buff. The one handed weapon has a choice. You can either enchant the weapon with flame or poison. Since we are a Dragonite, by applying a flame or poison to a target, you restore 1000 magicka and stamina, an easy way to help sustain your resources. The other choice is what trait to you, as charged and decisive work great for the build. We use charge to have a higher chance to apply our enchantment, as this allows us to bash a target for free if the enchantment is applied. We use decisive if we want to have a chance to gain additional ultimate whenever we gain ultimate. Whether that is from being in combat or from being a Nord. For the shield enchantment, we want Stanima. This allows us to block longer the more Stanima we have. The shield trait is sturdy, as this reduces the cost of blocking. For the back bar weapon, we have an Ice Staff of Crimson Oaths Revive. We use the Crusher enchantment as this reduces the target's armor. By using Elemental Blockade, this enchantment can happen even when we are not on the back bar. We want the Infused trait as this reduces the enchantment cooldown and it increases the strength of the enchantment. For jewelry, we use Crimson Ulf's Revive, as this set comes in the healthy trait. For enchantments, we want Magicka Recovery, as this is very important in our resource management. For the armor, we want to run 6 heavy pieces and 1 light piece. Starting with the monster sets, I run Incratus Bohemoth, Nanatak, and Tremor Scale as each set benefits certain groups better. Encratus improves flame damage in an area, along with reducing flame damage taken. Tremor Scale reduces the target's armor in a small area, benefiting stamina DPS. Nanatuck applies Major Brittle, great for groups who have high critical chance. For the body, we want to run a Claw of Yolanakrins. This set gives the group minor courage whenever we taunt a target. When it comes to enchantments, we want to apply max stamina to the head, chest, and legs. 
as this gives the full value of the enchantment. We will want Max Magica on the shoulders, gloves, waist, and feet. For the trait, we want every piece and sturdy, besides the chest and the legs. We will want these in reinforced, as this increases the armor. When it comes to the champion point system, there are three categories, craft, warfare, and fitness. As you gain champion points, the more points you have, the more you will be able to access. This build, at minimum, uses 609 champion points to have all the essential passives and slottables available. To max them out won't happen till champion 1600. Starting in the crafting, you will want to slot Treasure Hunter, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and Steed's Blessing. In the Warfare, you will want to slot Ironclad, Duelist Rebuff, Enduring Resolve, and Unassailable. For the Fitness, you will want Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Bastion, and Bracing Anchor. That will wrap it up for the Dragonite Tank. If you did enjoy, consider subscribing to the channel, as this is free to do so. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Leave a like to help this video reach other players out there. Thank you for your time today. As always, I hope to see you in game or in the next video.